So we're going to talk about how to do a confidence interval for a single proportion. And we know that if n is large, then we can approximate the standard error of the proportion with the square root of p times 1 minus p over n, uh, where we're saying that uh, large means that n times p is greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. And our problem is we don't know p. In the case of confidence intervals, we're going to use p hat to approximate p. So when we're making a confidence interval, um, our generic uh, task is to do the point estimate plus or minus some critical value times the standard error. In this case, our point estimate is going to be p hat. Our critical value is going to come from a normal distribution. And our standard error is going to be approximated by the square root of p hat 1 minus p hat over n. And we're going to set our z star value, our critical value, depending on our confidence level. So if we wanted to do a 95% confidence interval, that corresponds to alpha equals 0 0.05. And our critical z star value is 1.96. So let's think about an example. This is data from Pew Research. They did a random sample of 3,397 US adults in 2018, and they asked them if they have ever intentionally tried to influence or change the content on their Facebook news feed. And 1,219 of them who were surveyed responded yes. So we want to create a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all US adults uh, that have intentionally tried to change their news feed content. So we're going to try to create a confidence interval here. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to come up with our point estimate. So that is our sample statistic, um, which in this case is a sample proportion, which we note as p hat. And that's going to be the number of successes, 12, 19, out of the total number of people, 3, 3, 9, 7. And that'll be a proportion of about 0.359. So this is our point estimate. If someone said, give your best guess for what percent of the country has deliberately manipulated their Facebook newsfeed, I'd say 35.9%. But if we wanted to give a confidence interval, then we would need a couple more things. So we always have our point estimate, plus or minus our critical value times our standard error. And we're going to be using a normal distribution here so we know what our critical value is. We've got a z star value of 1.96. So then I've got my point estimate, 0 0.359, plus or minus 1.96 times my standard error. And the only thing that's tricky is I need to find my standard error. So the standard error formula is the square root p hat 1 minus p hat over n. And in this case, that's going to be the square root of 0 0.359 times 1 minus 0 0.359, which is 0 0.641, all over our total sample size, which was 3397. So we could say this is 0 0.23 over 3397, which is the square root of 0 0.00006. So we need to take the square root of that whole thing. And I think that turns out to be 0 0.0077. So now I can plug that in. I've got 0 0.359 plus or minus 1.96 times 0 0.0077 or 0 0.359 plus or minus 0 0.015. So if I subtract uh, 0.359 minus 0 0.015, I get 0 0.344. And if I add 0 0.359 plus 0 0.015, I get 0 0.374. So that's my confidence interval.
And if I wanted to interpret it, I could say, I am 95% confident the true proportion of Americans who have manipulated their feed is between 34 and 37 percent. So that would be making a confidence interval using the normal distribution as our approximation and computing our standard error. The one thing I forgot here is that we need to check the conditions. So this is very important. You need to check conditions. Um, and for a single proportion, uh, for a confidence interval, our conditions were n p greater than or equal to 10 and n times one minus p greater than or equal to 10. Um, and so we need to check that in this case. Maybe I'll switch to blue so that it's easier to tell apart what I'm writing. So in this case, our n would be 3397 and our p, um, we can use our, our p hat of 0 0.359. Um, and that's just going to turn out to be the 1219. And then if we did 3397 times 0. 641, that's going to be the 2178. So those two conditions are satisfied. Of course, uh, there's another way that we could have done this. We could have used simulation methods. We could have used stat key to do this. So I'm going to run through that as well. So if I was on stat key, I would be looking for bootstrap confidence intervals, confidence interval for a single proportion. And then um, I made this example up, so it's not in the drop down. So I need to edit the data. And I'll put in 1219 as my count and 3397 as my sample size. OK. Um, and then I could generate 1,000 samples or generate another 1,000 samples. And um, I could ask it to show me the middle 95%. Um, so if I click this two tail button, then it'll show me the middle 95% goes from 0.343 to 0.375. So that's basically the same thing that we found when we used our distributional approximation. There's one more piece uh, to the sections that are about confidence intervals, which has to do with margin of error. So remember, margin of error is our critical value times our standard error. Um, and I think we've talked about this before in the context of polling. Um, sometimes you want to have a particular margin of error. And so you can use that to determine your sample size before you do your data collection. So if in this case, our margin of error is our Z star value times the square root of P hat, one minus P hat over N, we can solve for N to give ourselves an easy formula to use. So I'm just gonna start by dividing both sides by Z star. And then I'll rewrite this up at the top. So we've got the margin of error over Z star is equal to the square root of P hat, one minus P hat over N. And then I could square both sides. So now I've got the margin of error over Z star squared is equal to P hat, one minus P hat over N. And then I could multiply both sides by N. Um, and then I'm almost there. Uh, I've got n times the margin of error over z star squared equal to p hat, 1 minus p hat. And then I could just divide by this margin of error over z star squared on both sides. And that means that n is equal to, and I can actually flip that fraction so I can do z star over the margin of error squared uh, times p hat 1 minus p hat. And so that would be my formula for n. Um, so the problem here is that we're not going to know p or p hat in advance. Um, so we're going to have to make a guess. And we'd like to be as conservative as possible. So the most conservative we can be is p hat equal to 0 0.5. 
So if we do that, then the, uh, the part of the formula on the right is 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, which ends up being 0.25. If we had something smaller, like say p hat was 0.4, then we'd have 0.4 times 0.6, and that would be 0.24. Etc. So the largest that we can make that um, that uh, right hand side uh, of the formula is by using uh, p hat equal to 0 0.5. Um, so if we set uh, p hat to be 0 0.5, um, we can also approximate z star by two uh, because 1.96 for a 95% confidence level, 1.96 is pretty close to two. And so then we could say n is equal to uh, 2 over margin of error squared times 0 0.25. And that's going to be 2 times 2 is 4 over margin of error squared times 0 0.25. And so then we can approximate this. I'll use the squiggly equals to be 1 over the margin of error squared. So this is a good formula to know uh, for approximating a margin of error um, sample size. So let's write that out again, just so we remember n is approximately equal to one over the margin of error squared. Um, so let's say we want to estimate a proportion with a margin of error of 0 0.01 with 95% confidence. Um, and then we need to figure out what sample size we need to use to ensure that. So we're just going to plug in uh, one over 0 0.01 squared. So that's 1 over 0 0.0001, which is 10,000. So in order to have that small of a margin of error, we would need a very large sample size. We'd need 10,000 people in our sample. Um, but oftentimes, the margin of error that someone is looking for is um, smaller than that, like uh, 0.1. And then you have to use a smaller sample size. So the takeaways here are that we're going to be doing confidence intervals the same way as ever. Our point estimate, plus or minus, our critical value times the standard error. And this stuff is called the margin of error. And then if we're doing a confidence interval for a single proportion, then our standard error for p hat is going to be approximated by the square root of p hat 1 minus p hat over n, where we need to check that n times p is greater than or equal to 10, and n times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10.